All right, let's start the uh, third talk this afternoon. Um, I will be the chair for the uh, next four talks this afternoon. So my name is Hong Wang from uh, University of Adelaide. Our third speaker today is Sam of uh, is, sorry is is Shmuley Bloom. His talk is going to be some of powers of decomposition. And to let you know, Shmuley's talk will be uh, recorded. So, please. Welcome to my talk on sums of powers decomposition. So what is a sum of power decomposition? Uh, let's take a look at the following motivating example. Consider the following type of polynomials which are called degree 2 forms. Some of these forms can be expressed as squares. However, clearly not all of them can, because in the general case the coefficients of the terms are unrelated. However, there is a relationship between the coefficients in the squares. Uh, consider this specific degree 2 form. We can ask whether it's a square. Um, because the coefficients of the terms aren't related to each other in the right way, though, it's not a square. What happens, though, if we try to express this polynomial as the sum of not one, but two squares? Uh, that can be done. Our polynomial on the left-hand side is then equal to the sum of two squares on the right-hand side. Um, although that specific degree two form wasn't a square, we were able to express it as the sum of two squares. But does this work for all degree two forms? In fact, it does. Uh, all degree two forms require no more than the sum of two squares to express them. In order to generalize to polynomials beyond the degree two forms, we will first require some definitions. Firstly, a homogeneous polynomial in two variables is one for which the sum of the powers of x and y are the same in every term. Uh, we call the value of that sum the degree of the polynomial. So for example, here we have a polynomial where the sum of the powers of x and y in each term is the same and equal to five and therefore it is a homogeneous polynomial of degree 5. Just a note on terminology, homogeneous, homogeneous polynomials of degree D are also known as degree D forms, therefore homogeneous polynomials can then be referred to just as forms. Also, uh, we can now see that degree 2 forms that we dealt with at the beginning of the presentation are just homogeneous polynomials of degree 2. We noted that degree two forms can be expressed with at most two squares. Now that we know that degree two forms are just a subset of the more general degree D forms, the question is, does this result generalize to higher degrees? Just like in the degree two case, uh, where some polynomials are squares, in the degree D case, some polynomials are D powers. However, not all degree D forms are D powers. Uh, however, uh, in fact though, uh, the degree two case does generalize, and any degree D form requires no more than the sum of D D powers to express it. So we just looked at the maximum number of D power summons required to express any degree D form. However, the focus of my research was to determine for a given degree D form, the minimum now the number of D power summons required. Uh, this minimum number is given a special name. For a given form F, it is called the wearing rank of F. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of polynomials to get a feel for the concept of rank. Firstly, um, we have two examples of polynomials with rank 1. It is clear that their rank is 1 because they are just deep powers. Our second example is the degree 2 form uh, from the beginning of the presentation. Uh, we already noted that it is not a square, so clearly its rank isn't 1. However, it is expressible as the sum of two squares, so 2 is the minimum number of squares required to express it, therefore its rank is 2. Uh, the third example is a degree 3 form 
expressible as the sum of three cubes. Um, I'll leave it as an article of faith for the audience that it cannot be expressed as a cube or the sum of two cubes. Therefore, it has rank three. So we're trying to determine the rank of a given degree d form. At this point, it makes sense to ask, what progress has already been made on this problem? A mathematician called Sylvester invented an algorithm for computing the rank of any form, uh, in the two variable case, that is. However, his algorithm requires that we pick a specific polynomial, plug it into the algorithm, and it'll spit out the polynomial's rank. Sylvester did not, however, in general, have a formula that allowed one to compute uh, the rank of a given polynomial in terms of just the powers of x and y uh, in its terms. The value of such a formula over an algorithm is that a formula allows us to say something about trends in the ranks of specific forms. So in my research, I try to develop a formula for the simplest case for which a formula doesn't exist, that is for the binomial case. Uh, the simplest type of forms are monomials. And although Sylvester did not in general develop a formula for the rank of forms, he did discover a formula for the rank of monomials. If a monomial is of the shape, a coefficient times x to the power of y, uh, sorry, a coefficient times x to the power of k times y to the power of l, where neither k or l are zero, then its rank is the larger of k plus one or l plus one. We can see that this formula for the rank of a monomial is only in terms of the powers of x and y. Uh, applying this formula to the example x cubed y squared, we can clearly see that its rank is 4. However, if k or l, either k or l are 0, then the rank of the monomial is 1. We've just noted that there's a formula for the ranks of the simplest type of forms, namely a formula for the ranks of monomials. However, for the next simplest type of form, binomials, no such formula is known. Therefore, my research focused on finding such a formula. I did, in fact, discover such a formula for the ranks of binomials, but only for two specific classes of binomials. I discovered a formula for the ranks of binomials of the shape m plus x to the d, where m is some monomial, and m plus x to the d minus 1 times y, where m is some monomial. Uh, the formulae the formula do not appear in the slides because they're actually a little difficult to pass quickly. But if you're interested, then you can take a look at my research paper, soon to be available on the ACHI website. Um, by finding the formula in these cases, I was able to say something about the result of adding these special monomials x to the d and x to the d minus 1 times y to a general monomial m. It turns out that almost always the addition of these specific monomials to a general monomial M does not increase the rank of M. The only exception was when x to the, oh, uh, the only exception was adding x to the d to the y to the d, in which case the rank increased from one to two. But barring this exception, the rank never increased. In fact, it often decreased. Let's take a look at the M plus x to the d case. What happens if x to the d is added to a general monomial? One thing that can happen is the rank stays the same. For example, the rank of x squared y squared is 3, but if x to the 4 is added to x squared y squared, then the rank stays the same. That is, the rank of x to the 4 plus x squared y squared is still 3. Uh, similarly for the second example. We can guess by looking at these two examples that the rank stays the same whenever the power of x in the general monomial is greater than or equal to the power of y. Uh, in, my research, in, in my research, I established that this is in fact true. Another thing that can happen when x to the d is added to m is that the rank decreases by 1. For example, x squared y cubed has rank 4. However, the addition of x to the 5 to x squared y cubed decreases the rank by 1. That is, the rank of x to the 5 plus x squared y cubed is 3, not 4. The rank, in fact, decreases by 1 whenever the power of x in the general monomial is less than the power of y. And as already mentioned, the one exception is adding x to the d to y to the d, in which case the rank increases from 1 to 2. 
That is, the rank of y to the d is 1, but the rank of x to the d plus y to the d is 2. Now, to, now let's take a look at the m plus x to the d minus 1 times y case. What happens if x to the d minus 1 times y is added to some general monomial? Uh, in this case, the rank never increases. Uh, again, there are subcases. Firstly, the same thing happens as in the x to the d case, where if the power of x in the general monomial is greater than or equal to the power of y in the general monomial, then the rank stays the same, as is illustrated by these examples. The second thing that can happen is the rank decreases by 1. This happens whenever the power of x in the general monomial is 1 less than the power of y in the general monomial. The final thing that can happen when x to the d minus 1 times y is added to a general monomial m is that the rank decreases by 2. This happens whenever the power of x in the general monomial is at least 2 less than the power of y in the general monomial. Uh, this description that I've given for the ranks of binomials of the shape x to the d plus m and x to the d minus 1 times uh, y plus m uh, has actually been a complete description uh, of those cases. Okay, I've spent a lot of time talking about uh, worrying ranks and minimal decompositions of polynomials, but why should anyone care about determining the ranks of forms? Uh, the answer is because we just generate too much data, and expressing homogeneous polynomials in more compact ways could help reduce the need to store so much data. If I can draw your attention to the example at the bottom of the slide, you will see on the left-hand side is a general degree 10 form, and on the right-hand side is also a degree 10 form, but one that is expressible as the sum of two tenth powers. So in general, it requires 11 parameters to represent a degree 10 form, corresponding to the 11 coefficients of, the, of its terms. However, if the form can be expressed as the sum of two tenth powers, it only requires four parameters to specify it. Okay, I haven't spent any time talking about how I actually determined uh, the ranks of these special types of binomials. Unfortunately, there isn't enough time in a 15-minute presentation to uh, explain the background material and talk about the method I use to determine the ranks of these binomials. However, uh, if you're interested, you can either email me or better yet, look up my research paper soon to be available on the ACTI website. Thank you. What are the coefficients? The coefficients of what? What? And are all the integers? Oh, the, the coefficients complex? are in the complex field. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, in general, uh, worrying type problems where you're trying to determine the worrying rank of a given form, either in two variables or more variables, uh, can be determined where the field that you're working with, uh, for, for any field, However, the easiest case to work with is the complex field, so that's what we focus on. Here. More questions? If no, let's thank the speaker again.